Bobby Lee was on Burt Kreischer's Burt cast. I thought it was a really good episode. Um, mostly because I feel like Bobby Lee and Burt are basically two end two at two ends two same person at two ends of the scale, really and truly. And I feel like the conversation was good in terms of you know opening up Burt's view on the, a different way to approach your career and shit. But having watched two days to tries review and summation of the pod i have i need you to relax so i have a different view on the conclusions that he made because i think he made the conclusion that um i think part two is to try said this along the lines of um you know bobby kind of being in the right and burt being in the wrong in terms of how he approached their careers but i think they both had decent points in that bobby lee telling burt you need to relax and Bert telling Bobby Lee you need to work harder. I think those are fairly accurate ways to describe both of them. If you were going to give Bert some advice, you'd probably tell him to chill out and to take, take take it down a notch. And you would probably tell Bobby Lee to not be so lazy and do the bare minimum. Um, that's what you'd probably say, I think, to both. So I think the conversation was quite needed for both parties to see. But I just think in general, it's interesting to see how they both approach fame and their careers and what they think is most important. So I'm going to play the clip um, of them talking. And then, of course, I'm going to interrupt in between here and there. But if you want to watch it yourself, you can. It's the latest episode of the Burt cast. It features Bobby Lee. Um, it's a really good chat, actually. Check it out. It's quite funny as well. Um, and you can obviously see it for yourself in full. But I'll play the clip. And, of course, I'll pause in between when I need to. I need so, you to relax. I can't. Not yet. You have to relax. You're I like challenging myself. So funny. <laughs> He, he did a marathon with you? Yeah, he did. We did the LA marathon together. Mm. I think I'm going to do the Spartan race in Dodger Stadium in Why? February. I don't know. I like challenging myself. Still? Yeah. Stop. You don't? I don't like it when you challenge yourself. You don't like challenging yourself? I need you to relax. I can't. Not yet. You have to relax. You're, you're stressing me out. Every time I see you, you stress me out. Oh, you stress Last me night, out. You stress me the fuck out, dude. Why did I stress you out? You could get three shows, and then all of a sudden, all of a sudden I know you have other things to do, and you're always <laughs> running around and stressing me out because it makes me feel like I'm not doing shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> and that's probably part of the reason why Bert does what he does. That kind of like, um, you know, you want to feel better than everybody else type of thing. You kind of want pats on the back for working hard because, you know, with comedy being subjective, you're not really going to have people congratulating you for your great joke writing or for how funny you are because it's so subjective and because Bert's got quite a hacky premise in that he takes off his t-shirt, most people just aren't going to listen to him or aren't going to think he's funny just off the bat of him taking off his t-shirt. So the only way to really get a lot of praise and to get people to kind of suck up to you is to kind of have work ethic. And obviously one of the defining facets of the GRE verse comedians is that hustle bro culture thing they got going on about the whole sets and rep thing being in it for 10 plus years that's what you hear most of them talk about you don't really hear a lot of comedians associated with Joe Rogan talk about being funny or putting on a good show all you hear them talk about is how hard they work and how many podcasts they do how many shows they do and shit how many stops on the tour they're doing but it's never really about hey was the show funny Am I being funnier? Am I getting more laughs? Are the shows fun? Are the fans having fun? It's never about that. So you can kind of understand why Bert does it. <laughs> what's your day? Look, what's your average day look like? What Nothing. Time, not what, like yours. I, my day is packed. It starts at like seven in the morning, six in the morning. Take out of the school. Get back. Uh, work out. Podcast. Shoot promos. Take fucking conference calls. That's a lie, by the way. I'm pretty certain he doesn't take his kids to school. I'm pretty certain he doesn't wake up at that time. He's probably hung over. And yeah, I think that all that shit's a lie, personally for me. I think that's a huge lie. I don't do any of that. Why? Why? That's why, why, why don't you ask yourself that? Why do you do it? Because I, I feel like I, I'm leaving stuff on the table. Yeah, but you know what? The, nothing that you achieve is going to fix you. That's a very good point. But I also think it's wrong. I personally think if you're Burt Kreischer, deep down, you know you're not at that level of fame and popularity because you're super funny. You know you're kind of there because of your personality, because of your larger than life personality, because you're a great hang, because you remind people of their college roommate, of an old uncle, whatever that thing. But it's not really because you're funny. If that's the case, you know that novelty of who you are will die off eventually. 
I think it's probably a good thing if you're Bert to not leave money on the table, to go for broke. It honest, I know this sounds odd, but I honestly understand why he does what he does as hard as he does because there's no guarantee this is going to last. People are soon, it's already turning. The shift, the tide is already turning on Bert, but public reception, right? People already get annoyed with him. And you never know when that could end up impacting his actual bottom line. So he's right in doing everything and taking all opportunities because you never know when that can all get taken away from you and then you're fucked so stack up your money make as much as you can now and you know while you can because why not you're fucking Bert Kreischer it's not like people are going to be watching you until you're fucking you know older age and shit because of your talent they're going to be fans of you now because they're fans of you now but you never know it could change in the future it doesn't for real yeah it, the whole point of is living in the moment and just feeling your feelings and just you know, I mean, you have to work and pay bills and stuff like that, but I think you do extra, and I don't like it. No, so is there a part of you that, like, I couldn't be you because... I couldn't be you either. I couldn't be you because... You're lazy. I would say, <laughs> at, you're everyone's favorite comic, and you've never done a special. So? I know, but don't you want to do specials? No. Why not? Why? That's a really interesting premise, isn't it? That he's never done a special. And I wonder why that is. My initial reaction will be because he's lazy, because doing a special basically is a time capsule and is a kind of record book permanent of the jokes that you had at that particular time so you can't basically do them again basically when once you do a special it's kind of like you ridding yourself of those jokes you can't really tell them again unless you obviously you want to do a special based a tour based on those special jokes so basically bobby lee from what i've heard again i've not seen him perform live but i've heard that he does the same set he's been doing for like 20 years so if that's the case if he does a special, he'll do those same jokes, but then he can't do those same jokes anymore. He have to write new jokes, and you know, writing new jokes is hard. So that's probably why he doesn't write a special. I don't think it's because he's this purest artist. I think it's more so because he's scared of giving up that material and having to write new material because he's probably not that confident or doesn't have enough faith in himself that he could write new stuff. That's the probably where it comes from. So I do agree with Bert that you know. He's a bit privileged in that way that he doesn't need to do a special, but he also should do one, really. Let me, let me, right. Number one, I don't want to do stadiums. Okay. I've done them with you guys. Yeah. You know, you don't I enjoy I, it? No. <laughs> I like clubs. Yeah. That's something that I love about Bobby saying that. I love that he said that he doesn't, because. I've almost, I've always wondered, like, how could you actually enjoy stadium shows, especially if you've come up from doing club shows, because it's similar to like kind of my sort of like pathway that I'm trying to lead myself down of becoming a professional DJ. There's really nothing better than playing in a, let's say, one thousand five hundred cap venue. Anything over that, it's hard to really have any sense of atmosphere to really connect with the audience. It's not the same. Really, anyway, under 700 is probably the fucking perfect number because everyone's kind of on top of you. It's amazing. But I think even more so for comedians, if you're in a comedy club, being able to look in people's eyes is a big part of comedy and being able to connect with people, especially if you're doing crowd work and shit. Suddenly doing that to then performing Madison Square Garden where literally the nearest person to you is like hundreds of feet away is probably not the same thing. But in general, I also think there are some comedians who type of comedy probably is best performed in a comedy club with low ceilings low, you know dingy lights and shit a brick wall backdrop that's probably where they shine the most this idea that theater comedy is like the apex is like the top echelon of it is again another consequence of the gre vap gre verse where like success is deemed at how many tickets you can sell if, in theaters when it's like Really, stand up comedy should be performed in shitty dive bars and horrible comedy clubs where the tables are sticky, right? And they serve chicken tenders and shit. That's where probably comedy should be performed at. That's where probably you have a good time at. I can't imagine you're going to have the greatest time at theaters and stuff. And again, depends on the comedian, but I do like that. He's like, hey, I'm not really into theaters, you know? So that's that's kind of your thing. You go into a club, you can touch people in the front row. Also, then, not not like sexually, but yeah. like, you know, tap, like, thanks for coming. Yeah. And then, um, and then it's also then you can sometimes meet them afterwards. Yeah. You know I mean? And get some side gash or whatever. And then uh, is that rude? We'll no. Call it side gash. No, side, wait, where is the gash? 
Yeah, no, I think you made a, someone made a good point there about clubs and being a good paycheck. But it also just must be good for the ego. Obviously, the the money helps, I'm sure. But I think a lot of it, especially if you're Bert and those type of dudes and Rogan and shit, they love coming out to that theatre audience, to that stadium audience. They must love it. That feeling of coming out and it's like, there's fucking 30,000 plus people cheering your name and stuff. That must be a hard thing to kind of, you know, put, to kind of like not want to do and then go back and performing in clubs. Yeah, that kind of roar from that crowd, especially if you're into that sort of stuff, seeing your fucking massive head on a massive LED screen, that must be part of it. The vagina. Okay, front bottom gash. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Why do Asian chicks have it on the side? <laughs> It goes this way. So, yeah. so, but, but don't, don't you like, don't you have any aspirations? Like, why do you do anything then? Like, why do you act in movies? Why do you act in TV shows? Is it for money? That's fun. It's fun. Yeah. But no, I, I like the creative, I like performing. I like doing pods because I get to express myself and I like acting sometimes, but it's like, you uh, when, when you did the bad friends tour, didn't, wasn't it fun to go into a theater, have it sold out, have everyone hear you? You do something, you you come up with something new, and you get off stage, and you feel like alive. Yeah, but I, I I did that. I can do that in the OR as well. And that's not the same. It is the same. No, it's not. In your mind, no. See, you're twisting it, man. It's not about numbers. No, but it's no, but it, there is something about being financially <laughs> stable. You don't have a you don't have a family to take care of. But <laughs> I, I love this. This is one of the best delusions ever. Again, it's a. Another Jerry thing. And I think, bless Brendan, I think this is the major reason why he's quit. This inability to be around these guys is kind of, you know, now that the voices around him are kind of quietened and no one's really talking like this, it's easier to quit. But when you're in the, in this kind of culture, it's difficult to not see the world like this, where he's like, yeah, I'm working this hard because of my family. It's like, bro, come on. Because you have a fa really? You're on tour all the time and avoiding your family because you want to help your family? You haven't made enough money now that you can just relax? Really? Come on, let's be real. You just loved it. And again, it's, it's, there's no problem with it. You love being on, on the road. You love touring. You love fucking, you know, what you call it? Um, comedy club, waitress side fucking gash, whatever it may be. It's all well and good. Um, yeah, but this idea that it's all for the family is hilarious. And I think Bobby calls it out. Right. What? And I, I don't know this about you because I'm not your accountant. Yeah. Right? But I'm pretty sure you don't ever have to work for the rest of your life. <laughs> exactly. I would say the same about you. Yeah. Now, you would have to maybe um, let go of certain things. Like? Because people have lifestyles. Yeah. Right? I try to lower my lifestyle. So it's like, I'll buy one pair of shoes a month. Oh, um, yeah. No, my mine's are like eight hundred dollars shoes. Right. No, I buy expensive shoes too. But yeah, yeah. I, I buy like like we'll go to Philly and I'll buy thirteen pairs. Of yeah, shoes. that's. But that's the thing, though. I don't think Bert has. My personal opinion, I don't think Bert has. He's a, that's why that's why I kind of like Bert. I'm not gonna lie. That's why I kind of like Bert because at least he's honest. He doesn't lie. Like he's honest. He's a fame whore. He's always wanting to be famous. He wants to be the center of attention. He only cares about himself. He only wants to hear his own stories. He waits to hear you. He waits so you can shut up so he can say his story. Like he's honest. And I feel like he's classic in the sense that he just loves the attention. He, he probably gets off more on the attention than he does on the money he makes. So I don't think he's one of those people who has a crazy monthly budget and or monthly cut nut that he has to cover. I don't think so. I think it's more so like he just loves the attention. He loves the adulation from fans. He loves to tell stories. He he knows that living's the only way to have more stories. So he kept keeps on living to full stories so he can tell them on pods and then that can make him more money. Like he just loves that thing of thing. So that's probably one of the redeeming qualities about Bert. He's quite he is exactly what he says in the tin in that respect, if that makes sense. Exactly, Dan P. He likes to be famous. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It just comes across odd because he's like a middle-aged man and he's a comedian and shit. It's a bit whatever, but he's actually unapologetically really desperate to be super famous. Like He would love nothing more than to be, um, what's his name? Jack Black level of famous. He would love that, right?
especially within like Hollywood circles or whatever, he would love that. That's what he wants. He always wants to be that guy like, oh my God, Bert's here. I mean, he wants that kind of reaction everywhere he goes. Stupid. I know, I know. Because you're, you're not going to wear it. I don't wear them. And you think it's going to fix you because at the time it feels, oh, it you, doesn't. I love that you're, I'm getting therapy from you. I'm not doing therapy. <laughs> I'm not doing therapy with you. But, but like, doesn't, do, is there not a part of you, because I think everyone, college kids have your mentality where they're like, yeah, I'm not going to sign up for too many classes this semester because I don't want to be overwhelmed. I want to enjoy college. But like, I don't. I've got a point. I've, I agree with Bert a little bit here. I think this is one of the reasons why I kind of stopped listening to the Tiger Belly a little bit and even Bad Friends. Bobby's kind of infuriating in a way. This is part of the reason why he's endearing. But he's also infuriating in that he's like an adult baby. He's never really grown up and he's kind of been afforded a lifestyle that allows him not to grow up because he's a stand-up comedian. But that's not really what most of us can do as adults, especially him. He's like in his 50s or 60s. And he's basically created this life for, lifestyle for himself where he can be in a state of arrested development. So if you're Bert and you're looking at Bobby, you're like, you know, it's like you could do more, but you don't want to because it will require work and it will require you doing stuff. You don't want to do stuff. You just want to do the bare minimum and get the most out of it, which is okay, but let's just call a spade a spade. But then on Bobby Lee's side, you can also understand, you know, saying, hold on, you've made more money than you can ever spend in a lifetime. Take the foot off the pedal. It's not that deep. So I think both sides of the argument are right. Literally both sides are right. At a certain age, don't you, don't you aspire? Aspire what? Like, don't you? Don't you, don't you? Don't, 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 aspire, what, what? don't you have something? You're That's, Asian. How do you not have don't, 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 the thing that all Asians have? Well, first of all, there's different kinds of Asians. You have the Yao Ming kind. They can do baskets. Yeah. You know what I mean? Then you have the fucking um, Yo 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 Ma kind. Yo Yo Ma? Yo, I thought Yo Yo Ma was black. <laughs> Why? Because it's Yo Yo? <laughs> you never seen a photo of him? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The only time I saw a photo of Yo Yo Ma, I can't really t say this. I can't. Anyway, you get a gist. Um... I think they were both right. I really do think they were both right. Um, I don't know. I I don't know. I think they're both right. I understand where they're coming from. Um, you know, it is what it is. Good conversation. I think if anything, they both look at each other and couldn't imagine ever having each other's career. But I also think it probably speaks to how great things are for them, that they can both be quite successful, despite not being the greatest of what they do. And maybe despite, in Bobby Lee's case, having the same content or material for 20 plus years, and in Bert's case, being one of the most hackiest comedians out there. So it goes to show that if you just find your niche, you find your niche, you find your crowd, you find your fans, they can basically sustain you the whole way through. And, you know, it's no real surprise also, since the movie flopped, Bert's been kind of doubling down on the stand-up. Not sure if you've kind of spotted this, guys, but I think Bert's realised also stand-up is his main thing and obviously podcasting and shit and he stopped trying to be a hollywood star because he just probably doesn't have the chops for it maybe the movie wasn't right for him who knows but that's obviously another thing as well that's kind of helping things go the way it's going so um good conversation really recommend you check it out burt cast available now bobby lee and burt sit down have a good powwow and talk about all the stuff that you heard there and some more and some more